Hi, I'm Rick Stengel. I'm the editor of Time, and I am here with Radhika Jones, who is the executive editor of Time, and more importantly, the editor of the Person of the Year issue. And the Person of the Year for 2012 is President Barack Obama. So how did we choose him? Why did we choose him? It really was a, f it was a few days after the election. It was when the dust was settling, and I had obviously read our own story that Michael Shearer reported about the Obama data team and how instrumental they had been in getting out the vote. He writes very convincingly in this issue that it, it wasn't just a question of smart strategy and data mining and all of those things. They're very exciting things, and they're technological advances, and they're important. But ultimately, Michael writes, people come to the polls to vote for Barack Obama. He has that pull. Um, he is a, still a symbol to people for something that they want the nation to be. And, uh, and I began to think about that in the days after the election and think, you know what? In a way, this is a more compelling story than the story of 2008. Uh, certainly, I thought if he gets reelected, and he gets reelected with unemployment being 8% or higher, with all of these economic headwinds against him, with this idea that he was very vulnerable because his first term hadn't achieved everything that right. he wanted. That would put him in the pantheon. And, and if you look at second term elections of, of, of recent vintage, basically, I mean, Ronald Reagan had economic rhythm going mm -hmm. with him. Bill Clinton did as well. George Bush was a war president by right. that time. The circumstances that Barack Obama had to fight against were in some ways harder than anybody since FDR. When we spoke to him, too, um, he has the freedom now as a second term president to be thinking about his legacy. Mm -hmm. um, he's not thinking about another campaign. Right. Uh, as you write in your editor's letter, he never has to say again the words, I approve this message. Everybody, of course, obsesses about who the person of the year is, but we are also busy obsessing about the whole year and how this magazine issue and the whole package online and on the tablet, how we can tell the whole story of 2012 and all the things that happened. And one of them um, was that Tim Cook had his first year, full year at Apple. I mean, obviously he took over from Steve Jobs, a very, very difficult act to follow. But in that, in his first year, he's practically doubled Apple's value. He's extremely well versed in right. Apple and China and the rise of, of Asia, which is another reason why his selection is forward looking because that is where so much of our future lies. A person we all thought about a lot and I thought about a lot was Malala, the 15-year-old mm -hmm. Pakistani girl who was injured by the Taliban, whose father is, is, a, is a child and women rights activist and, and she has become this extraordinary figure championing uh, women's rights around the world. I did think it was also a little bit reminiscent of our choice last year, the protester. I mean, I think the, real, the compelling thing about her is she is a child still herself. She's still recuperating. She's in the hospital in London. Um, she was shot and targeted by the Taliban, and obviously that's been a huge trauma for her and her family. But she will come out of this, hopefully, more powerful and with a stronger voice than ever before. Another person we thought very seriously about was Mohamed Morsi, mm -hmm. the new president of Egypt. And Mohamed Morsi, in the Egyptian context, is in the middle. He's in the middle between the Salafis to his right, who are far more extreme even than the Muslim Brotherhood, the party he came from, and the liberal secularists on the left, who are, for the most part, not terribly well organized, but have in this period, since his decree, abrogating the courts, they have become more powerful and they have become more organized. So he's right in the center of so many of the most important currents going on in the world right now. Our final runner-up is Fabiola Giannotti, who was one of the lead scientists behind the discovery of the Higgs boson particle, which is a particle that was first prophesied by Albert Einstein in his general theory of relativity. And in fact, this is the final link in the general theory of relativity. But it's the particle that actually gives the universe mass. And she was part of a team of scientists who led this discovery. But we were particularly inspired by her as a woman in physics. You know, it's a very male-dominated field. Uh, and she has a background, I think, partly in the humanities and has added to this discovery a sort of lyricism um, that has particularly touched people who've become interested in it over the past year. Mm -hmm.